Today I'm going to show how to paint light and transparency in watercolor. We're going to talk about the two parts that you need to do in order to paint light. Part number one is getting the lights light, not allowing them to get too dark. It's really important to have light if you want to paint light. Now all of these ones that are see-through, there's a pattern in the leaves and it's more important on these see-through ones for that to show because it's part of what makes it look see-through. So when that dries, I'll add some of the rest and that'll give it a little bit more darkness, which it definitely has. And now let's move down to this one, which is also bright, still yellow, but a little bit of more orange yellow. So now while it's still damp, I'm going to put some of these little lines in so that they spread out and don't actually form real lines. Now behind there is one that's very light, right behind the, in here, behind this stem. That's the cool thing about backlit is that the grapes in the back are the ones that look bright and light and the ones in the front are the darkest ones. When you're shining a light at something, it's the other way around. So in retrospect, I think I should have put the frisket on and I'm actually going to stop and do that for the rest. I'm putting a little tiny bit of frisket into this pot and then with a completely clean brush, I'm going to add some water to that. I'm taking my Simply Simmons number two brush, very basic, and rolling it in my brush cleaner and preserver and then I'll just paint with that. This is Incredible White Max Mask by Graphics. It's kind of, kind of new to it, but I really like it. Let's see, I'm still going to go back to those ones that I already did and go over them with the frisket so that I can be a little bit less careful for the rest. getting a tiny bit of my Scarlet Pyrrol. It is the most intense color in my palette, I think, and you have to go very sparingly with it. So I had a very watered down puddle for what I just put on there, and it's still quite intense. So just if you use it, have a care, but it does make a lovely, lovely bright orange. This is still a little damp. And I'm getting some of these pyrrole red. Mix it with some of the scarlet pyrrole. And get some of these brighter areas in here and let it just kind of spread. Now it could be a little bit drier than that. It won't be spreading into stars and be forming the streaks a little bit more, but I think it's going to look okay. Sometimes it's hard to tell how dark or light something is when it's against a white background instead of a dark background like this. But I have these little trusty squares and they really help with this problem. You hold one on the picture and one on your painting and look, it's not nearly dark enough. And this color that's on here actually looks a little bit pink. So I've put pink on my palette, um, Cronacridone Rose, and I'm watering some down. Now I didn't put any greens on my palette before I started the grapes. I was thinking the grapes were all red, but here's some light ones that are green. And so um, that's way too bright, but it is kind of a bright green. And I'm going to put a tiny bit of magenta in it to tone it down. Drying off my brush, not really cleaning it, and putting some yellow in and letting it get a lot lighter as it comes across. And I did it while it's still wet, so it's all blending.
Sometimes I just can't tell what a color is. And then these really help. So that's sort of a rose, but it's a little bit purple. So I think I'm going to mix some of those room with the rose. Sounds loud. Yep, it is loud. So let's wash it out and quickly pale it down because those are some staining colors. Now at the back, it's quite dark, and alizarin is a great color for shadows on these kinds of things. It, it dries, it's look, sort of purple looking, but it dries a little bit browner. It's much more important to get your values right than to get all of these nuances of the, the patterning and all that going. So if it stresses you to do all this detail, just don't even worry about this patterning. Now there, I went out of the lines, but that can be fixed with the background. So these grapes are going to take the longest time of everything on here. And don't worry about that. Just take your time. You can paint it smaller if you if you don't want a lot of time. But I think that um, paint. I decided to paint it a little bit bigger than I usually do for demos because I want it. To. So I'm going to fill in this bright one as best I can with all the branches that are going across it. There's a whole bunch of stems that converge right on this spot. And they kind of add a little charming interlude in here in the grapes. This one's pretty intense at the bottom, even though it's one of the darker grapes. It has this bright glow at the bottom. Try to get that in. And that's not nearly dark enough. Then it turns more burgundy. So the lizard comes and gets in here. But it has some greens mixed in, so I'm going to streak the crimson and then add the greens. And then there's this little dot there. It's on quite a few of these. And it's, it's a gray. It's not so dark that it looks black. It's a little bit of a gray. And I want to get that because that definitely adds to the look of transparency on these. This is the most tedious part of this painting. Doing, these, doing the different things in here that make it have some texture. Now, if you are an impressionist painter and you don't want to worry about that, then don't worry about that. Just splash on the paint. But make sure you get the values right. The values are what makes it look round. Like this one looks quite round. This one looks a bit flat, so I'm going to fix it. So this is the one that's missing this darker side. And if you need help with that, this little tool can really help. And see how much darker that is? I hope you can see that. So I'm going to make a color with, uh, I'm going to make some alizarin crimson for that. And just add a tiny, tiny bit of green to it. I'm going to just start at the side and make it fairly dark and then dip my brush, wipe it off on the sponge, and just bring some of that over as a shadow on that side. And I'm keeping my finger on this grape because a minute ago I got lost on the other one, thinking I was on that one. And it just mostly goes across that top, and then I want that to blend in. You know, sometimes I squint at them, and that helps me to see what I've gotten off. Sometimes you need to lift a little bit on one side instead of adding a bit. Sometimes the color that you need to use to make something look right is actually an ugly color. And when we see these beautiful grapes, it's easy for us to not want to put an ugly color on them because they're so pretty, and they look so pretty, and how could that be? in the painting, but it's the darker and sometimes drabber colors that make a painting bright colors shine. But it is these darks that makes those lights look transparent. It, but as soon as these dark grapes are done, it's gonna pop and it's 
really fun putting on those darks. We're going to be using quite a bit of a alizarum because it's a naturally good dark color, but I'll probably be adding some indigo to it to make it dark enough. And I'm being careful on these edges. I'm slowing down and getting a good crisp edge. It helps if you turn your paper. So here comes some indigo. Ooh, too much of a good thing. So I'm gonna spread it out quickly. And put some more alizarum on top of it. And this goes into some very light green but as it goes down, it just gets lighter. And so I'm gonna, right now, start going lighter. Soften this edge right away. And now I'm gonna get some of my green in, and this is quite a vibrant green that it has down here. I think I'll just leave it like this. This is permanent pale green. And then, I'm actually going to mix some of that with some of this room for the next layer of color. Which is making a sort of brownish look, isn't it? A little more green. See that I didn't make this one dark enough at the top. And I discovered that by squinting. That's another way that you can sort of tell is when you squint at something, it loses the detail and whatever prettiness you might be distracted by and, and just gives you the values. I'm going to put some stems in now to be able to give some completion to this. These stems also have a very much of a glow and some of you might want to paint all of that in, but I feel like if I get the values right on the stems that, that that'll be good enough. I have several photo references here for leaves, and I might change the colors to them. I'm making the brush strokes directional, but I'm not putting in nearly the detail that I did into the grapes. Now I'm going to put some of these darks in. 
and in the darks I'm going to put lights while it's still wet so that it blurs. This is phthalo green and indigo for some very dark color. That's almost black. I'm going to lighten it a little bit by thinning it down. And I'm going to have another brush loaded with some lighter color. Now this leaf I want to fade into the background, so there's, I'm going to have three brushes going actually. I want it to, to be a little fuzzier on the edge, so I'm going to allow this color to go into the leaf pretty far. This is drying, so it's better to do one little section at a time. I end up using a bunch of different brushes necessarily want this whole background so dark, so I need to soften these edges before I go on. And then I want to drop some grape color, sort of reminiscent of this look right here. And I'm going to let it run. Let it be more than one color. And then while this is still wet, I'm going to put some stems through here. I might even go with a smaller brush. Everything you need for this project can be found in the comments below. So you see a little bit of the background happening, and these pieces here where the background showing through the grapes will make a huge big difference on what this looks like. But this is a huge part of what makes light in watercolor, is the darks in the background against the lights in the foreground, and then the darks and lights within the project itself. Number two, without the darks, the light won't shine. It's really important to have the darks. If you don't have any darks, then you have a really bright painting. It might be pretty, but it won't really show light. You have to have some darks. Period. End of subject. Exclamation point. I really like doing a dip, using a dip pen with paint on it for stuff like this. It, uh, it allows you to do it in paint and match your colors, but it gives more control. Harder to switch colors midsection. That's kind of amazing that even though you put it on with a brush, how long the color goes on these ink pens. One of the things that I noticed is that these center ones, these two, are a little bit too light. And the other parts of the light will stand out much better if they're darker. Now I'm going to take off some of the frisket. You can't take off the frisket where it's wet. And I'm using um, I'm using the incredible white mask frisket by Graphics, and it is easier to take off than other friskets I've used. And then of course we have to fix these bright white spots that have shown up. Thank you. 
Now all of these that have a glow, they're they're almost white, but not quite. And then this uh, the side that where the frisket is, that has to be softened a lot. That's one of the the uh, struggles with fr frisket is that you get very sharp edges, and you always have to do something to it, almost always. Now one thing I'm doing is I'm sh I'm softening some edges because. If it's too sharp against the background, then it looks like you cut it out and paste it on your paper. And so all you have to do is just run over it with a clean, clean water on a brush and just touch that edge. And it just softens it enough that it looks like it's part of the page. I'm putting a little bit of bright back into leaves because there's so much bright in the grapes and the sun would be hitting the leaves as well. Stood back and looked at it, put it on my shelf, and, and I'm seeing that this is too loud. This and this little bit complement a little bit, but it needs something up here that really says, wow, like the rest. So I'm gonna actually put some edges of yellow and gold on this one. I'm going to start doing the bouquet. Now you just need a stencil brush, sometimes this little one, and then you put these all over where you want them. I'm going to put a few where those grapes were. Get your brush wet, push it into your sponge, and just turn it around. And then you have to dry everything. I'm going to do a few more of these that but not lift as much. I'm doing them different sizes. Grapes are different sizes. Lights shining through the trees are also different sizes. And then I'm going to do some in the green. Depending on your color, some colors lift easier than others. And um, so you kind of get used to that. If you're working on damp paper, you have to actually be careful. You can lift too much. You want some of them to overlap. And some if they don't overlap or they're all, they're not different sizes, they end up having this look of they end up looking polka dotted or something like that. Now, I think this needs a great big one bigger than any thing I have because it's a pretty big painting. So, I'm just going to do it that way. tissues too because it makes a mess and you do have to rinse your brush periodically or you just move paint from one place to another. Now I want some light to be coming from behind these grapes but I don't want my green to go into the grapes so I'm going to get this little stencil brush and do that. And you just keep going until you don't think you need any more. So right now it's still it's starting to look a little bit like there's some polka dots here and there, and I definitely don't want that. So I'm gonna get some in between sizes and go over top of some of the ones that I have so that it's not just a round shape. And while I'm at it, I'll do one over here. first ones you put, it feels like you definitely are getting too many because they stand out so much. But then as you put more, let's take the tape off and see what we've got. I didn't like the composition. The bottom right corner is too bare and the action is all on the left where the grapes are and your eye just doesn't go anywhere else on the page. One of the ways that that could be solved is by simply cropping the painting like this. 
Even though this video isn't about composition, I did want to at least like the composition. And so on the bottom right, I added some leaves and made it that it's at least workable and still continues to bring the focus back to the grapes, which are, in my mind, the best part of the whole thing. This whole berry got darker, cherry, grape. And this berry's even darker, cherry. I keep calling them berries.